Let's give the player the ability to shoot. It's gonna be pretty simple. If you've done projectiles before, this would be no problem. All right, so the first thing that we need to do is we need to actually create the sprite that it's going to be like a throwing star or some sort of projectile that the user, the player, will actually instantiate in and then fire. So I'm going to come up here, right click, insert new object. It is going to be a sprite and I'm going to choose Sprite from the menu and then I'm gonna click somewhere up here. It doesn't really matter where we click because we're gonna move this off the screen and I'll explain why. Now we need to grab in the artwork for this throwing star. So I'm inside the RPG assets. I'm gonna to go to items and then go to weapons and my shuriken or my throwing star is down here at the bottom and this is the Sprite that I'm gonna add in. This is the artwork, uh, import from files. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and delete that first frame of the animation and it's just a single throwing star. I'm gonna crop around it so that all of the colliders and everything are right up against it and we are good. We don't need to name this animation or anything like that because it's just a single object that flies through space. So now we have it here. Now, construct is a little bit funny. You can't instantiate objects that are just part of your project. They actually have to be in the scene to be used. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zoom out a little bit here and I'm gonna take this throwing star, the shuriken, and I'm gonna move it off of the screen, someplace where the player can't get to it and the camera will never see it. It's gonna be up off the left-hand corner or bottom right or somewhere off of the regular screen, but it's still there because I'm gonna to need to actually instantiate a copy of it and I'm gonna need some of these traits to stay all of the time. One of those traits is the size. I'm gonna change the size from 18 by 18 to eight by eight. That is about half the size of one of these squares, which is a perfect size to be a throwable object. That looks awesome. Then I'm gonna go ahead and select it from my project pane here. This grabs the parent, the actual like prefab of this object, and I'm gonna go ahead and add a behavior to it. And it's going to be a bullet behavior, because this is gonna act like a bullet. Double click to add that in, that looks awesome. Now, a couple of things that you might wanna change about this bullet behavior. Now, these are up to you whether or not you wanna change this. Here is the speed. That is how fast this gets thrown. So play your game, see how it works, and then you might wanna just change the speed right off the bat. This right here is bounce off solids. So anytime it hits an edge or it hits a wall or it hits something like that, it'll actually bounce off. This can actually be turned on and off in your event sheet to give your um, bullets kind of power-ups. Same with the speed. You could actually make them fire faster and move faster depending on certain things they collect in the scene. So for me, I'm gonna leave this off because I don't want it to bounce off yet, but later down the road, I might give the player the ability to unlock the ability for this to, to bounce off. All right, so we have everything in our scene. Let's go ahead and go to the event sheet and add in all of the events. I'm gonna add a new event and when the mouse left button is clicked. So I wanna find the left button clicked. So on click and then which mouse button? We're gonna choose the left mouse button. Which click type? It's clicked. We could also do double click so they actually have to double click to shoot, but clicked feels better in a game. If you're playing any professional game, you click to shoot and that's what we're gonna do here. We're gonna go ahead and hit done. So now when the mouse's left button is clicked, we're gonna fire something. So just in case you guys don't know, there are two or more buttons on your, on your mouse. There's the left click, which is where your index finger rests, and the right click, which is where your middle finger rests. We want left click, that's where your pointer finger rests, and so that's what we're gonna use. Now we're gonna go ahead and add in some actions. The first thing that we're gonna add in is the player is going to spawn an object and that object is going to be that shuriken. I named mine Sprite. Let's go ahead and rename that once we add in this event. It's gonna be on layer zero, which is the same layer as the player is on. And all of that looks good. Let's go ahead and click done. Now I'm just gonna rename this Sprite from Sprite to be um, a star for, for like a throwing star. Awesome. I love how you change it here and it changes it everywhere in your code. You don't have to go back through and refactor or anything. So now that we've spawned one in, we need to set its position to be the same position as the player. So it spawns in and then like goes to the player. So that when we set the bullet angle and we actually fire the bullet, we do that from the player, not from some random spot on the screen. So let's add an action and we're gonna change something about the star. We're gonna set its position. 
So let's go ahead and find set position. So I can type set and we want set position. We're going to set the position. Now the X position is going to be the same as the player. So we can grab the player and their X component of their position. And we're going to do the same thing for the Y. We're going to grab the player and grab the Y component of its transform, of its position, and then hit done. So this line of code will actually set the position of the star to be the position of the player. Zoom in a little bit so you can see that a bit better. Now, when we hit left button, we also want to set the angle that the bullet is facing, set the angle the bullet is facing to face the mouse, because the mouse is how we aim. So we're going to go ahead and add an action. It's going to be on the throwing star. The throwing star is doing something, and we are setting the bullet angle. We're not setting the angle of the throwing star. We're setting the bullet angle. This is very different. So we want to set the angle of motion on the bullet. Now, this takes in um, a little bit of code. So the angle is going to be an, an, a certain angle. The angle takes in some parameters. It takes a first x and y and then a second x and y. So the first x and y is going to be the throwing stars or the stars x and y. Star dot x comma star dot y. Now the second one is the mouse's position. So mouse dot x and mouse dot y. Now this creates two points in space and then measures the angle between those two points and sets the throwing stars angle to be that same angle, which just basically says, find these two points, make a right triangle, find that angle, rotate the bullet to that angle. Awesome. This is super hard to do in Unity. Unity, we'd have to use a quaternion and Euler angles. In Construct, we just write angle and then pass in the two things that we're measuring the angle between. So, so cool. All right, done. We have this in degrees. This is perfect. Now what I want to do is I want to wait a few seconds before it gets destroyed. So we've created the bullet. We fired it. Now we need to eventually destroy it so that we don't overload the RAM in the game. So system, I'm going to go ahead and grab a wait. And that wait is going to be two seconds. If you want your bullets to disappear faster, you can make this a smaller number. I encourage you to change this number based on the game that you have and the size of your map. Maybe two seconds allows it to go across the entire map and kill every enemy. Maybe you need it to be 0.2 seconds because your map is really small and you don't want somebody like Superman to throw the star. You want it to be like a regular ninja. So I'm going to go ahead and do two seconds and then I'm going to destroy the star. Let's see if this works. So I'm going to play my game. I click and I shoot throwing stars in the angle that I click. Now I can spam and shoot a ton of them before I kind of run out of RAM, but we can add a cooldown if you wanted. Maybe that's a pro video. If you'd like to see how to add a cooldown so you can't just spam and shoot a million times, we can absolutely do that. But for now, Shooting is working and it's looking awesome. I'm super excited. This game is really taking shape. It's starting to become a real game.